Hey guys, it's Quinn Reminder Dodek, and I'm coming to you today with a parts list for my 2014 Hackintosh build. Um, now, what sort of inspired this build was I've always liked OSX better than anything, and um, I've sort of been throwing around the idea of making a Hackintosh for a while now. And I finally decided to do it because I've had my current computer for about four years, and it's starting to get slower and for the things that I want to do with it, it's becoming not suitable anymore, as it has um, a 3.2 gigahertz i3 processor and a 512 megabyte um, 5670 GPU right now. Um, it has a nice amount of RAM, but that's not why. So I've started to do a lot of PC gaming lately, and I'm really a console person at heart, but some of the people and some of the games you need to be on PC for, like Titanfall, I'm not going to go out and get an Xbox for it. So I'm just going to make a high-end PC and play on that. And then some games are PC exclusive, like CSGO or whatever, and Gmod, and those are games that I'm going to be playing too. And I've been playing them on this computer, but they're not necessarily suitable. And then also for video editing and everything, um, this computer should just blow it out of the water. So I've never built a computer before, but I have recruited the help of a lot of people, including in real life friends like RB3 Supreme, whose channel link is in the sidebar, uh, old Minecraft friends who have gone on to bigger and better things that have helped me pick out the parts, and then people like Tony Mac X86, like his forums. Um, he has a whole compatibility list for OSX. So it's sort of a mix between my ambitions, my friends' knowledge, and then OSX compatibility. So if you're trying to build a Hackintosh and you have a good amount of money, then this these are some parts that I highly recommend. So let's get right into it. Alright, so for a Hackintosh, what I've learned is there are definitely brands that need to be included in your build. And Intel is definitely one of them because no Apple computers really ever go down the AMD route. So I think they, they might have used to but now they're all Intel so you're gonna have to go with Intel and I went with the Intel i7 477k and the clay and the K just means that it's unlocked and you can overclock it um, and this is just because I decided to do this because the 477 one and the 477k were the same price and the same base speed but I just decided if I ever wanted to overclock in the future that this would be the one to go with so if you're gonna get a processor this is definitely one that I would recommend now for the motherboard I went with the Gigabyte GA Z87X UD3H and this is also another one of the brand things because OSX needs really specific drivers and this motherboard fits all of its needs it has plenty of PCI slots and it can go all the way up to 32 gigs of RAM which is what we're gonna be doing and we're gonna max it out so this is also another highly recommended piece. But if you wanted some slight variation, you could always go with the UD4H or the UD5H. Now for the GPU, this is probably the last piece that is pretty much brand specific. Um, you sort of have to go with Nvidia on this one because again, OSX doesn't really support AMD cards or processors. So with this one, I went with the GeForce GTX 760 and I went with the EVGA model just because EVGA is pretty much the highest you can get in the market. The specific one that I got has 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM and it has ACX cooling which is two fans that keep it nice and cool. Now with the RAM I didn't really do anything special and I went with 32 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM and it's four 8 gigabyte modules and this maxes out the motherboard. Um, just one thing to note, uh, you can really go with any RAM, but if you do decide to go with Corsair Vengeance, just be sure to remember that it is very tall RAM. It's probably some of the tallest on the market, so just watch out and look for case compatibility and make sure it doesn't block anything, especially if you have a CPU cooler. Now with the power supply, I also went with the Corsair product, so I went with the Corsair CX600 power supply. Um, which is probably the best selling power supply. I think it's the best selling power supply on Amazon. Um, it's basically the most versatile. It's a good, reliable power supply because Corsair is definitely known um, for theirs. And it's not modular, so all the cables are there and come out. 
which can sort of be a hassle with uh, cable management. Um, but with this build, it is estimated at around 400 watts, but I decided to leave a little leeway for upgrades in the future in case I ever wanted to upgrade my GPU or start overclocking, so that is why I went with this. Now for storage, what I did is I sort of split it into an SSD and an HDD. Um, I am going to be running OSX off of an SSD, so it is faster because with um, an operating system, you're constantly making small little file transfers, which is definitely much much faster to be run on a SSD drive instead of an HDD. So this will allow it to be much faster, and I went with a SanDisk Extreme solid state drive. Um, it's just a SATA drive, and it just mounts on to the side of what my case will be. Um, the reason I went with this is because you didn't have to edit any files with it for OS X. Like with some of the Samsung drives you did, and then I wanted to go with a Kingston one just because it was cheaper, but I decided to not take the risk and go with this. Now my hard disk drive is definitely nothing special, it's just a 1TB Western Digital Blue. Um, internal drive it just goes right in your case and this is basically a really standard drive that everyone uses it's good and reliable so if you're one to perhaps um, use more external drives and you do internal drives just get this and you'll be perfectly fine now for the case I went with the Zalman Z9 um, although in the picture it shows the Zalman Z9 plus and the only difference between the two is if you will look on the left side you see there are some windows. Um, there's still the mesh on the Zalman Z9, just the clear windows are not there. And also the temperature gauge um, on the top uh, front left is not there as well. But it's just a really nice looking case and it has support for up to seven fans. Um, as well as many other things, it supports up to a lot and it's nice room in there. Um, nice cable management, so it's definitely a great case. Now, these are sort of optional pieces from here on out. So, if you're like me, I don't have a Ethernet port in the top room of my house. And I have really good internet, so if I were to have an Ethernet port, it would be really good. But sadly, I don't. So, I have to get this. Um, it's an internal Wi-Fi card, and it just goes right into your motherboard and via a PCI Express slot. Um, it's the TP-Link. Um, WDN 4800 and it's a pretty good Wi-Fi card it gets up to 4850 megabits per second and that's really good compared to a lot of the other things so if you need a Wi-Fi card this is really one of the only ones that works there is a, Wa a Roswell that works but I cannot recall it at the moment um, I might link it in the description now if you're going to be overclocking with your processor, I would definitely recommend, and I'm sure anyone would, a CPU cooler. Um, this is just the one that I would get. It's the uh, Cooler Master Hyper Evo 212, and it is probably one of the most popular ones. It's the number one bestseller on Amazon, and it's a great CPU cooler for the price. Nothing really more to say about that. Another kind of application specific thing is um, an optical drive, but as discs are becoming less and less prominent, um, I feel like there is going to be one day though where I need um, an optical drive for something and I don't have it and I'm going to be screwed. So I decided to get one anyway. Optical drives are pretty cheap now actually. This is a SATA drive. It's made by LG. Um, pretty much anyone by LG. Um, I'm sure you could get like an Asus one. Um, but LG, I would probably just go with LG on this one. And now for the final part of the build. I got some aftermarket fans just because I wanted to make sure that my computer components were always cool. And Cooler Master makes really good fans. These 120 millimeter Jetflow fans are really high quality, and they look really cool too with the LEDs. Um, they have a unique palm bearing, which is I guess it's not really as unique as it used to be, but it's a self-lubricating bearing um, that has a fan life of up to 120,000 hours, I believe. So if you're gonna get a fan, I'd pick up one or two of these, or just something else by Cooler Master like the Sickle Flow 120. So yeah guys, these are all my recommended parts for my 2000, for a 2014 Hackintosh build. Um, these are the parts that I ordered as of yesterday. Um, this weekend, they will all be here by this weekend. I ordered them all off of Amazon. Um, 
the prices sort of fluctuate on there um, between all the other stores but pretty much Amazon is a good reliable retailer that I would always go with I also have a prime membership there so that sort of helps um, so this weekend I should be building this and I will be uploading a video of the build um, and building it and a software tutorial um, I will be using Unibeast for the OS X install um, some other things that I didn't mention in this um, you're probably gonna need a flash drive and definitely um, you're definitely gonna need a flash drive and then you could also go with a Bluetooth adapter just via USB anyone can really pick out with any prior knowledge um, you may need to research the Bluetooth adapter though if you need one but yeah guys um, thanks for watching the buyers guide for the parts list and I will get back to you with another video hopefully by next week of the build I will talk to you guys later see ya